We're just wondering whose office you're coming from to deliver that preference card. I don't know if I can say legally on camera. Hello, this is Ross Ramsey here on Wednesday with the Texas Tribune Tribcast. We had the inauguration. Yes. It was weird. It was on the wrong side of the Capitol. It was on the north side. <laughs> it's a new day in of, Texas. Instead yeah. of the south side. <laughs> uh, so what was the scene over there, Alex? It was basically a couple of speeches and... A couple of speeches and we all went home, basically. <laughs> um, but now, Dan Patrick and uh, Governor Abbott both uh, spoke yesterday at the inaugurations. Dan Patrick and his speech was really pointing to bipartisanship, both with Republicans and Democrats, and then also the House and Senate working together this session. Patrick had brought up Bonin on stage with him, a move that he said was unprecedented, just to show that the House and Senate are really focused on working together. In Texas, we're different. We work together across the aisle. Patrick said something along the lines of, you know, Washington could take note of, you know, how we are all working together. So we'll just kind of see if that holds true in the next coming months. We will muster that same resolve, that same ingenuity to tackle the challenges of our time. And we are going to prevail this session. Governor Dan Patrick announced the long-awaited Senate committee assignments. Before bills in the Texas legislature can make it to the floor, they have to go through a committee. And that's where the sort of details get sorted out. Committees hear testimony from the public, from stakeholders. So the chair of the committees in particular is really influential. You have the power to keep basically any bill you don't like from passing. When these lists come out, we get to kind of see a glimpse into what Dan Patrick or in the House, Dennis Bonin, is thinking. It's an indication of sort of who's in with the leadership, who's out. To me, the old, the Selger is the big surprise. And maybe it's One of the most notable shifts was sort of a thorough snub for Senator Kel Seliger, who is a veteran lawmaker from Amarillo, a Republican, but a moderate. Not only did he lose his chairmanship of the Higher Education Committee, he also lost his seat on the Powerful Finance Committee. He interpreted this as a snub from the lieutenant governor. A top aide to the lieutenant governor called me and said, you know, if the senator doesn't appreciate his new committee chairmanship as the agriculture committee head, we'll be happy to give it to someone else. Senator Seliger went on a radio show in West Texas. He said, And I have a recommendation for Ms. Sylvester and her lips and my back end. After a meeting with the lieutenant governor, Senator Seliger was told he would not be leading the ag committee at all. Critics would say this shows you that the lieutenant governor is sort of playing political hardball. In 2017, he voted against two of the lieutenant governor's priorities. You need 19 votes in the Senate to bring a measure to the floor for consideration, and right now the lieutenant governor has exactly 19 votes on the Republican side. Senator Seliger is at 19th vote. So the question now is whether he could sort of become a thorn in the lieutenant governor's side. This is a warning to other Republicans that if you stray from the lieutenant governor's agenda, there will be a price to pay. I have a blank one if you want to see a blank one. Yeah, that would be awesome. There's what they look like. Thank you very much. Oh. Pretty much as you'd expect, It I is guess. a card. Preference cards are how House members voice to leadership where they'd like to be, what committees they'd like to be on, and they submit those at a 5 o'clock deadline. I just turned in my committee card, so every single member gets a blank card with six spots on it, and we fill in committees on that, and then we uh, hope that we get them. <laughs> they all get put on a big board and, you know, seniority and preferences and all of that gets, gets tried, you know, put it together in one big mix. And this whole place runs on a committee structure, so it really matters which committees you get on and what kind of work you can do. That's the key things. Talking to the members, finding out what they want to work on, what are their preferences, 
um, and really where's their desires at. I really thought about the issues that are important to the people of my district uh, and I thought about the issues that I'm passionate about. I mean I'm gonna shoot high and try to get on the committees that I really care about which are primarily education related. I've always wanted to serve at Ways and Means but as I told the speaker I serve at the pleasure of the speaker wherever he wants to put me. He's got to balance a lot of things and and make a lot of decisions um, for all you know 149 members in the house. One thing I've talked a lot about is that women are over a fifth of the legislature we shouldn't have any all-male committees anymore. I think nobody wants to be made to look bad, right? I mean, people are always interested in like whether you're rising and falling and how much power you yield. And if you don't want to kind of put it out there that, you know, I asked for this, but I only got this. Yeah, everybody says, let me see your card. I don't show my wife my preference card. So no, I'm not gonna show anybody else. Why not? <laughs> When I uh, had the honor of being elected speaker, I was certain that the hardest job I would do would be assigning committees. And I thought it would be very, 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 very difficult, but I was wrong, I was mistaken. It's an impossibility to get it right. Newly elected House Speaker Dennis Bonin announced committee assignments for the 86th legislative session. The House Clerk went through the entire list of the 34 standing committees. Standing committee appointments by committee. The Committee on Agriculture and Livestock. Chair, Springer. At least publicly, everyone seems to be pretty pleased. That's Democrats, that's Republicans. I was talking to State Representative Chris Turner, who's uh, the new chair of the Higher Education Committee, and he was just saying how you know he, along with his colleagues, seem to be pretty uh, pleased with everything. In this new list, it seems that Democrats are certainly chairing more um, substantive and busier committees than, than I recall under Speaker Strauss. It's all good. I think all the uh, appointments from chairs were excellent. It looks like he's staying true to wanting this to be a member-driven house, so that's what I'm pleased about. Work on legislation. This session can officially begin. I'm proud of the work we did, and I'm even more proud of the work that we're going to do together, working through our committee process to deliver great results for the people of Texas. Speaker appointments, Yvonne Davis of Dallas, Julie Johnson of Dallas, Kraus, Meyer, Niave, Smith. The Committee on Juvenile Justice and Family Issues, Chair Dutton, Vice Chair Murr. Seniority appointments, Kalani.